There we are, we're live. Welcome to this clearing video for clearing dragons and alcohol energy from you. I'm going to talk about alcohol energy first because I would say that's much more interesting to pretty much everyone than dragons. I'm going to start by talking about energy hygiene. Last night I scheduled a video for clearing dragons and then I was going to do DMT, ayahuasca, mushrooms and a bunch of other psychedelic drugs. And then I thought, well, let me do alcohol as well, that's a drug. And then as I was thinking about it, I thought, no, I should just do dragons and alcohol because there's a lot here and there's a lot of different types of alcohol. So it's not, I can't just make one energy that does all alcohol. It's very good at identifying the different alcohol drinks, but I had to, well, I'm, I'll rephrase that. I can make a video that clears all alcohol, but it's not a press one button and kill the alcohol. I had to identify various different alcoholic energies throughout my body. And I found out yesterday while doing that, that I had a bunch of alcohol energy in my body. You think, oh, well, that's perfectly normal. It's not normal because I've never drunk alcohol other than like once or twice in my life uh, as a sip and thought, all right, this is not very good. But unfortunately, my dad is, maybe was at this point, I don't know, is or was an alcoholic. And he's been an alcoholic for a very long time. So especially when I was clearing myself from this energy, I found out that a lot of the alcohol energy I have in me was from pre-birth. So essentially, when it comes to energy hygiene, if you are not energetically shielded, and even if you are, it's really difficult to prevent your parents' energy from getting into you unless you really go in and you cut connections and you, you block off negative ways for their energy to get in. So I found out that I had a bunch of alcohol energy all throughout my body and I'd never even thought to try and clear it because I never, it was very well veiled. If you're around an energy, it becomes familiar. Especially if you're around it before you're even born, that energy becomes completely natural and you're used to feeling it. And for me, I can immediately recognize when somebody has taken alcohol, unless they're really good at hiding it, but I wouldn't really feel the energy on them. And that's because for me, it's very familiar. So I was very desensitized to it. So I went through my body and found all kinds of various alcohol energy that my dad had just exuded from his system. Either he would drink the alcohol and it would be in his energy field, and then because I was in the same house as him, it would get on me. Or even worse, he would drink it and then he would enter demonic trance-like states and just mumble things. He mumbled things a lot when he was sober, so it wasn't that different. And then he would direct that energy at me or whatever was running him if he's taken the back seat in his body and he's handed it over. Then the demonic entity has got, ah, yes, a baby or an eight month old pre-born infant. Let's get them. That, that happened a lot too. So what I found is in your energy field, if you look over here, this is your left. On the top left side of your energy field is this big black gate. And this is what I shall call the alcohol gate. And through here is all the various alcohol energy. It veils itself very well. So this video will be going through your alcohol gate, clearing the energy, and then ideally trying to clear the gate so there's no effort to hide when it comes in your field. It's very, very obvious. Overall, at, while you're clearing this, you may suddenly have a craving for alcohol. That is not your craving. That is the energetic aspect of alcohol in your cells, in your energy body, in your emotional body, and a few other various areas that are craving alcohol. That is not you. So do not think, oh, that was a good video. Yeah, I've cleared a lot. I can have a drink. No. Also, do not play this video and think, oh, I'm, I can drink because I'm going to play the video which will clear the negative aspects of alcohol clearing for me. No, this is a clearing video, not an alcohol shielding video. You are not going to drink and have the negative aspect <laughs> taken out. That being said, if you do, especially if you're an alcoholic and you lapse, play the video, clear yourself from it. But just playing this, don't think this is a get out of jail free card. I'm not making a get out of jail free card for you. Now this energy, it's really, really good at veiling itself and other energies. So what I found, let's say red wine, for example, because my dad drank a lot of red wine. Therefore, I have a lot of red wine in my energy system. Thank you, dad. Red wine, the, and this goes for almost all alcohol, there will be this surface layer. This is an energetic veil. This is what the 
regular person feels and experiences when they drink it. So red wine, it looks, depending on the type, but the, the one I'm mainly including for me, it's like, there's like this strawberry fruity surface and it feels like a bit of joy. And then underneath that, right, this is here, underneath that from like there all the way, all the way to the floor and then 10 meters underground is a lot of demonic energy. Red wine is just for the demons. While I was clearing red, red wine from my body, I was feeling the effects I suppose somebody would have if they were intoxicated with it. And I felt, it was very weird. It was at the, I was aroused and disgusted at the same time. But it's a disgust with yourself more so than anything else. And then it, it's also, and I've seen this on others, it's a disgust with any other person uh, intimately being with them when they're in this state because they themselves are disgusted with how they feel. Another common uh, alcohol is whiskey. That is, you, it's, it's less veiled than red wine. There's a very thin layer at the top of about this yellow, almost like a popping candy type energy. It gives you a small buzz and then underneath a lot of vampiric energy, some purgatory energy, and then mainly demonic energy as well. A uh, very major one, which either my dad drank a lot of, or this energy is really strong, is vodka. And that has a surface layer, which is actually pretty strong, but the surface layer itself is just mean anger energy. <laughs> but it does give you this sense of calm. And then underneath that is a bunch of purgatory energy. So yes, even if you're like me and you're not somebody who goes out of the way to get drunk or, or drinks whatsoever, if you happen to have parents who did, well, then you have to clear your energy from this. It's, it's annoying, but that is how this is. It's also really surprising. Energy will do this. It will make it that you don't even question it. I never thought I needed to clear alcohol from me. And only when I started, I go, oh, there's, there's a lot here. And this is actually really major. Now, the main areas alcohol energy hits, first of all, it hits the heart, not the liver, but the heart. It really gets in the heart, builds a lot of energetic programs. This is why people, even though a lot of people hate themselves when they're drunk, they'll have this desire to keep drinking. That's a lot of energetic programs and addiction that's been set up in the heart. Then second is the liver. It mainly, I'd say it targets the liver because it weakens your overall energetic resistance, allowing it to more easily get into your system. And then, you know, later leads to liver failure, but that's not usually the desired cause unless it, you started Unless you've had an uh, argument with the alcoholic energies, it's usually not deliberately trying to give you liver failure. Then after that is the throat, then the nerves, especially the facial nerves and the arm nerves. You see this in a lot of people who drink a lot of alcohol, they usually have arthritis. And often the alcohol will make their arthritis better. And the reason for that is if you have a lot of this energy in you, or even if you just have negative energy targeting in general, let's say you just have a lot of vampiric energy targeting. My mum's mum, she would go to bed and she would wake up the next day covered in bruises. And what it was, was negative entities would come and they would invade her physical body because she was a targeted person. And then she would wake up with essentially entry wounds all throughout her body. And it was as if somebody had come in and just absolutely beat her up <laughs> overnight when it was very unlikely that anyone had. She wasn't that heavy of a sleeper. And this happened for years. And she ended up developing arthritis and a bunch of other rather common illnesses for elderly people, but she was sick and in pain her whole life, practically. Now, she never figured out they were entities, and even though I'm pretty sure she could see ghosts and other things around her, she never once, told, she never once said to me, or, or I would say, or my mum, but my mum is, She's not a very accurate or storyteller or has a good memory. But she never mentioned to me that she was saying things. She just said that things were beating her up. And even when I told her when I was having nightmares as a child, which is another rather horrific nightmares for a three-year-old, she would, you know, she didn't tell me she saw some of the things. So if she was, she kept it to herself. But with her, she discovered that if she drank wine, especially red wine, her mind would just calm down. The, the pain would calm down. And that's because the entities and energy that were targeting her would feed off this energy and they would grow. So they enjoyed her doing this. Now this was doing harm to her in the long term, but in the short term, she could relax. There was less pain. And she ended up drinking 
caskets of wine. I think a casket is a dozen, and she would she would drink them. She would drink by the casket. Now it's very impressive to me how she was an alcoholic because the main reason I knew is her husband refused to go and get her alcohol, and her health had declined to the point where she wasn't going to the shops. So my mum would go to the shops and buy her like four to six caskets at a time <laughs> once a week she would buy her a lot of caskets of wine and she would go through them she must have been doing like a casket a day sometimes and I'm, I'm not exaggerating she if you're an alcoholic you really can't do that and what I found very interesting as I was thinking about this last night is while she was going through all this wine I would go and stay with her for a day or two and she never once drank in front of me so she must have been going to a bedroom and drinking in there but that's when somebody is really a problematic alcoholic when they are so ashamed of themselves that they they're not sitting there with a glass of wine no they are ashamed that they're drinking so much so they will go to their bedroom and binge drink bottles of wine over and over um and her husband was getting annoyed because she she was you know drunk most of the time and she was doing silly things like leaving the hot plate on and well, that, that's the one thing that comes to mind because she left the hot plate on a bunch of times. <laughs> what way? It's like, stop doing this. You're going to burn the house down. Um, but if you've gone to that point where you're an alcoholic who hides it, you, you've then become someone who you cannot have a glass of wine. No matter how much the entities in your head will tell you, no, no, you can just have one glass. It'll relax you. You'll be at peace. You can't do that. You have to quit entirely everything, right? You can't even have um, any kind of mild medication with uh, alcoholic substances in it because it will majorly go to your alcohol gate and kick it and then the programs in your heart and everything will respond to that and then you will have this incredible physical yearning. It's not just a mental aspect for these people. It is a physical cellular aspect to the point where every cell of their body is like, oh, I need this. They, they have this intense desire. And depending on their entities, if they go and do Wim Hof, if they take cold showers, you're gonna need a long cold shower if you're at that stage. But if you're doing that, the yearning will decrease. But if you're not doing that, if you have bad habits, then the yearning will just increase. One energy that alcohol, especially red wine, really veils is pornography energy, which I may have picked up from a family member as well. <laughs> so, as I was cooking this energy, it would be layer of red wine energy and then just a lot of pornography energy, which is why a lot of people who have pornography addictions usually have alcohol addictions because they will sit there drinking and they won't even be doing anything. They will simply be watching pornography because they are just soaking in that energy. They're just really, really feeding their entities. You know, they're having a great time. They're relaxed in the short term, but the second that they're not drunk and they don't have access to pornography, they start spiraling pretty hard. I'm just reading the chat now. Now, it's not just alcohol that helps lower negative energy targeting pretty much anything that feeds them does i've had a few clients but who've said to me that their entity pain and their overall mind only comes down if they play like the most insane heavy metal music and i have to tell them all right well you're going to stop doing that because you, you can keep doing that and you can keep feeding them and things will still gradually get worse over the next few years and, and then you know worse and worse and worse it will just it will just spiral or you can stop that and even if your mind is really loud for two years, two and a half, and it gradually gets better as you clear through it and take control of your mind and body again, in the long term, that's really what you have to do because you're either going to make a change and stop feeding them, and they won't like that, or you can keep doing it, and after a while, sometimes even six, seven months, they'll go, yeah, actually, we've had enough of this. We're gonna keep targeting you anyway, and You'll play this, and we might lower the targeting by that 1%, but it's really a short-term fix. It's, it's not going to fix things in the long term. Another thing alcohol energy does is it physically weakens the entire body, but often it will energetically build up. So let's say you're drinking caskets of wine, right? And that energy, it, it just, it doesn't hit you. You're not getting physically weaker. You're not mentally getting any worse, but it will just sit in your energy field and often 
this energy will go in and open various basically gates to the alcohol energy grid or energy room the pool of this uh, of this alcohol energy um so if it's red wine it's red wine energy if it's vodka it's vodka energy it will open a gate and just pour an energy pour an energy and then when you're drinking it really pours it in because you're not going to suddenly think why am i suddenly drunk and i've not actually drunk anything although to be fair alcoholics aren't going to question that they'll just think oh good i'm feeling i'm feeling the pre pre-drunkness if that's that's what goes up in their mind but this energy will come in and it will build up and it will build up and it will build up and it will often try and basically debilitate you so the only thing you can do is sit and drink wine you're not going out you're not doing anything other than sitting there so for my grandma i believe it built up built up and built up especially around her hip and then she I believe she fell in the bathtub and her hip just at that moment the fall probably wouldn't have done that much damage although alcohol does weaken the, the bones but it hadn't weakened the bones that much and then she fell and it went <laughs> crack and made the fall significantly worse than it should have been and she broke her hip and then she rehabilitated from the broken hip for I'm gonna say three four months and then she died shortly shortly after that so the major blow to the hip was what killed her and it will do that too as well um especially if you're targeted some people they drink and they barely feel it and then what's going on is they usually have perhaps a potentially very old demon or vampire that is just accumulated energy accumulating it and then it's like all right i'm going to save this up and then one day i'm just going to hit you know hit you with it all at once uh so it's not an uncommon tactic One thing you would know of the stereotype of uh, like wino cat mums, these people on their, usually their late 40s, although they're getting younger, but their late 40s up who have 20 cats and they will go to the grocery store and I've seen this in person. They go to the grocery store and they fill up their cart and they barely put any food in there. It's just caskets of wine, boxes of wine, usually red wine, or can be white wine, but usually red, especially if it's on sale and cat food like really don't don't buy that that stuff is not good for your cats and a whole bunch of cat food and it's like all right do these things go hand in hand they're lonely and they drink wine and yesterday i was setting up the energy for this and i was talking to a friend and she tapped into the energy of red wine and then her cat came over and sat on her and just soaked up this energy now she'd not drunk anything but just tapping that energy the energetic the energy of the wine because unless you're crazy people might be crazy you're not going to be like oh you guys can have some too and you pour pour you know a bowl full of wine for the cats usually you're not going to do that because that's not sensible but the cat will come over and it will suck up the red wine energy from you and then the cat will be essentially drunk and then usually the cat will her cat did this he's, he's not very bright he went and slept and connected himself to the wine realm and he was having a great time until he ran into something demonic where he then immediately flipped back to his body with a bunch of demonic energy that he'd picked up in the wine realm. So he was seeing the veil, the thin veil of wine energy that's there. And if you're an energy worker and you're, you're just starting to practice and doing, you'll see these areas and you go, oh, this looks nice. It's not nice. What you're seeing is the, the thinly layered veil of what's covering the true energy. So he would have been having a great time in this basically like candy land and then suddenly a demon would have come out of the ground and started eating him and then he fled back eh, we're going to bring the demon with him he's a very silly cat but that is why a lot of these wine mums have a lot of cats and it, it's a basically a vicious cycle because the cats themselves get addicted to the wine energy and then they will be putting energy and trying to put thoughts in their head and it's rather easy for them to do this for the owner to go and get more wine so then the cats can get drunk off the wine it's a vicious cycle but i believe that's why it's such a common phenomenon good now let's talk about drink driving now usually right let's say someone's out there at a pub and they've drunk and they think all right now i should not drive home that is a very bad idea because I could crash and that would be very unpleasant. I could crash into someone else, which would be even more unpleasant. But 
maybe if I drive really slow, really slow, I can get home and I won't have had to pay for a taxi to take me home and then pay for a taxi because usually if you're drinking at a pub, you've not got like, you know, <laughs> that many people around. They're going to be like, sure, I'll pick you up from the pub. Um, you may, you may. But anyway, you rather than calling someone or calling a taxi, they think, no, no, I, I can do this. And often the wine will be like, yes, yes, drive home. You are responsible. You're a great driver. You're what? You could be a stunt driver, right? So they do, they drive home and they don't get caught. They get home, the car's in one piece, they're in one piece, they've got all their legs. That That's great. And then the next night, because they're an alcoholic, they do it again. And they go, oh, this is good. I'm, I can get away with this. And the the anxiety, the natural anxiety they had, which is their consciousness going, hey, what are you doing? Don't drive home while drunk, right? This is a terrible idea. They begin to realize, no, they, they can get away with it. They're not going to get caught. And they can go years without getting caught. And then one day they're potentially even sitting at home and they're just drinking caskets of wine. They're drinking a, like... a 84 pack of beer and they go oh no I'm out of beer that was my last one oh and they have this insane like incredibly strong physical yearning for alcohol so they go all right that was my last beer but I I am a stunt driver I am a better driver when I'm drunk because I'm I'm much more relaxed so they get in the car and they drive to the beer shop <laughs> And what's crazy is often they'll, they'll get there in one piece and they'll get home in one piece. But all it takes is one time when they're really drunk and they go oh, oh, into a, you know, a traffic pole, into someone else's car, into a school, right? And then they're like, oh, oh dear. I thought I was a great driver. Um, but that's how drink driving really gets away on people because they get away with it. And it becomes something that they truly believe that, that they can do and there'll be no, there'll never, never be any repercussions because they always get away with it. Now, I think drink driving is incredibly stupid. It, it, and to, it's to the point where if you are an alcoholic and you are drink driving, if you're watching this, you go, oh, that's me. He's talking about me. You may need to get a lockbox, put your car keys in the lockbox, right? And then take the key and hide it because when you're drunk, you're not going to remember where you put the key. And put the key in a different time every every time. Yeah, you'll, you, if you're a real alcoholic, you'll be screaming, you're, where are my keys, right? Um, but you're not going to walk to the store. I'm, I'm, you're, you're probably not, because you'll walk outside and you'll get about 20, 20 steps away from the house and you'll fall over. But when you're driving, you know, you've got a steering wheel to hang on to. It's much easier to stay, you know, upright. <laughs> It is easier than walking a lot of the time. Now, one thing I found while I was clearing this energy, I've had insomnia for a long time. I, I, I couldn't tell you when it started, but I've had it on and off since I was a child. And that is because it was my dad's energy, because my dad had insomnia. He had a lot of other things too, a lot of anxiety, a lot of demonic energy, but he had a lot of insomnia. And as I was clearing this energy, I actually started to feel tired at a, at a natural time, like in my body's natural rhythm. Usually I have to go to sleep and try and orchestrate and orchestrate going to sleep energetically but my insomnia went away and also the color saturation of the world has gone up for me so it's like colors are more vibrant the world looks better so this was just alcohol which had put this filter which lowered the color saturation of the world so that was a very good um I'd say, result. I also found out that while clearing this, I woke up today and I felt hungover. And I've never been hungover. I've also never felt hungover, but I woke up and I'm like, why am I so dehydrated? This is not how my body's supposed to feel at this time. I'm usually pretty good with drinking. Drinking water, that is. So don't be surprised if you're feeling hungover. Usually a hangover will be, you've drunk a lot the previous day, you've poisoned yourself both physically and energetically, and then, oh no, it, I was just thinking, ah, oh, it's, it's not stopped recording this whole time. This is great. And it just stopped. But now it's back. I'll clap. There we go. Now I can sync up my uh, audio and video and post much easier. I've done a lot of energy work on my camera. It's hard to work on technology that's that smart. But it's improved greatly. 
Someone tell me what I was talking about. <laughs> We're talking about... Yes, no, someone's going to have to tell me. I have forgotten. Uh, I Yes, that's right. I woke up. No one told me. I remembered. I'm very smart. I was saying, I woke up and I felt hungover. Now, when you're hungover, basically you've taken all this and then your body does a physical and an energetic purge and your whole body aches. And it's the reason why you're dehydrated is that is one thing that people, souls in general, the energy of the human body has figured out that if you drink a bunch of water, you will then need to pee. And when you pee, you will expel, unless you've got major blockages, which most people don't have, you will expel all the demons that you have drunk from the alcohol yesterday. So that is a major reason of dehydration. The reason the whole body aches is your energy body is suddenly trying to deal with a bunch of <laughs> demonic energy or purgatory energy. So that's why you feel hungover. The hangover is a good thing. That's your body trying to fight the poison which you've inflicted upon yourself. Now, let's talk about the actual process when people drink. So when someone drinks, and this is before they're properly drunk, the energy will usually tap into sexual trauma wounds first. So if you've had bad sexual experiences, if you've had negative entities that have been very naughty, right? then it will go for that first and you'll feel it around your bottom. If you haven't had that, or you've not had any major ones, then it will tap into other trauma wounds. And now, let's say your dad was an alcoholic. This energy will be like, oh, let's tap into dad's energy because, and this has not happened for me, but you see this happened to a lot of people. Let's tap into dad's energy because dad has a lot of alcohol energy and will also tap into traumas about our dad and really just make the person miserable. So somebody who, may, their dad may have died 15 years ago and they get drunk and the first thing they do is they start crying about their dad, about how we never loved them 30 years ago, right? It, the, the energy is like, all right, it's, it's nice what it's doing. It's programming you straight into that. And now you would have heard about people when they drink, they have an alter ego. And often they'll be like, oh, my name is not, whatever their name is. They're then my name is now Sharon or some other entity name and they'll walk around and they'll, they'll tell other people that that's their name and they'll have a completely different person and they'll often they might remember snippets of this but often they've just blacked out and what they've done there is this energy has just your consciousness is in your brain this energy has just knocked your consciousness aside and it is now running your brain the problem with that is you may get Sharon or you may get like you know, Christopher the axe murderer who killed someone. And then you have to go, no, no, that wasn't me. That was, that was Christopher. And the judge will say, well, Christopher was running your body. Therefore, we're going to put your body, which you were in, you were residing in this body in prison for you have just murdered someone. So committing a crime while you are not, in, not running your body does not mean you're going to get away with, with it. It's also, when people drink, you can often see their eyes really change. My dad in particular, when he drank, his eyes would go bright wide. Now, my dad, he was rather mean while he was sober, but you could look at him and he'd think, oh no, he might, he might pick me up. And well, my dad was very anxious, so I could look at him and he would, from really from like 13 onwards, he'd think, he wouldn't think I'd beat him up. He'd think, he's going to kill me. And then his entities would really give him a bunch of anxiety. So you could play on that and he'd leave you alone. He'd stop picking on you so much. But when he was drunk, the uh, fear of repercussions suddenly went out the window and I was like, all right, well, am I really going to beat up my dad because he's just screaming the house down three times a week? It's like, no, it's probably not worth it. But it's very clear that, especially now, my, my dad had a lot of demonic interference for some major reasons. One reason, he was run over by a... My dad's never going to watch this. And people are like, oh, no, he's talking about his dad. He's not watching this. No one's watching this in my family. <laughs> no way. So he was run over when he was in Africa, when he was two, I believe. And that would have caused a major physical trauma wound, which just let every and any demon in. And then he also liked to drink alcohol a lot. So that definitely wasn't helping as well. So he had a lot of demonic energy and he'd switch even when sober. When he, when he was drunk, he really switched and he'd have these like bright eyes and just have, it was like a demon's face would impose upon his face. And that happens for a lot of alcoholics. You'll see it when they're around. Their facial features basically morph to, to a noticeable extent when something else is taking control of their body and often they'll black out and they'll think it's actually, it's actually funny that oh yeah I, I don't remember any of that 
It's like, oh, well, well. It's, it's not. You've, you've handed your body over to something else. But usually, and this goes for all possession, not just demonic possession, demons will want to, unless they, they really don't care, they will want to at least be believable that it's the person. So they won't just possess the person and be like, all right, I'm going to walk in front of a bus, right? Unless you really know about demons, then they might try it. But usually they're not going to do that. They will possess them and they will just be a worse version of the person. Sometimes they'll be better if they're a, ha a happy drunk. If the person's a really miserable person, right? Then they might improve with the alter ego. But mo most people don't improve. Most people are not that bad that the demon is a better substitute for them. Just trying to think where, where where was I going with that? My brain is clearing a lot of alcohol energy at the moment. I, I, evidently, my brain has been swimming with vodka since I was five years old. Just rather annoying. Now that being said, if you let's say you have children, right? Or let's say you are pregnant. If you shield the infant, then it will not pick up alcohol energy from others in the vicinity. And so long as you and you don't do this, if you so long, don't drink when you're pregnant. Don't have your husband drink. When he's pregnant. No. Don't have, don't have your husband drink. This is the vodka in my brain. Don't have your husband drink when you, the female, are pregnant. There we go. If he's doing that, right, let's say you, you were, you didn't pick very well, and he's going to drink anyway, he's not going to listen to you, then you will have to go into your baby's family tree connection and temporarily wall up, or you can sever it if he really sucks, but wall up the connection there so the booze energy does not come into your baby and they end up with a brain full of vodka before they're born. Now this will not lead to physical, this will not lead to physical um, infant infant alcohol syndrome. So that's, there's another name for it. Um, that sounds better, but that, it won't lead to that if he's drinking, but it's, you know, not help them energetically, that's for sure. Um, Sylvia asked, I'm wondering if you cleared your death from any of that alcohol. No, I did not clear my dad. I'm clearing me from this. I don't really care that my dad did this to himself. <laughs> so no, no, this video is for the person playing. You, you can play it for your dad. I'm not going to play this for my dad because my dad, he's made his bed. He can, you know, live with all his alcohol energy. And also, if you're playing this for someone who is an alcoholic, they will often be like, They'll get an intense craving for alcohol because their alcohol entities will go, oh no, something's affecting us and we're being cleared from alcohol. Go drink right now. So if they're not aware of energy, I mean, you can keep playing, especially if you don't lift them. Play for three months and it, they'll get better. Um, but no, I'm not clearing it from him. Fetal alcohol syndrome. There we go. I remembered it yesterday. Clover asks, can the entities guide them to their key? No, no, entities aren't that smart. But they can be, but usually if an entity, an alcohol entity, it's not going to be something super major. We'll just take over when they're drunk and they'll go, all right, he's, I'm reading his mind. He's got a key somewhere. He doesn't remember where the key is because <laughs> he's ruined his brain with alcohol. All right, let's search the whole house for the key. That's usually what happens there. Now, different drinks having different energy makes sense but one thing which a lot of people who drink alcohol find it very quickly is to not mix alcohol my dad in particular he talked about how he mixed red wine and vodka and the next day he he, he was so hungover he, he had the worst hangover he'd ever had and if he had a gun he'd have shot himself it was that bad now to be fair my dad didn't have much of a discomfort tolerance but what happened is he drunk red, he would have drunk red wine and it would have opened a gate probably around his heart and then he would have drunk vodka and it would have opened a gate over here on the back, I'd say, um, on the right side. And this energy, the red wine went, wait, why, why are we having to share this body with the vodka energy? And they would have had a clash inside of his body. And that's what would have led to the next day him having the worst hangover because he was then feeling the delayed effects of the energy damage and he would have felt terrible. That's what happened there. I asked one friend, his name is, um, let's just say, uh, we'll, we'll give him a, a code name. His, his name is Smith. He lives at uh, 73 Albany Lane, Wyoming. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Anyway, 
I asked him uh, for a story of alcohol because he's rather aware of energy and he, he used to drink quite a bit. And he said that one time he was in the Navy and he was in a port in Plymouth and him and a bunch of his Navy friends were out drinking and he was quite drunk and one of the women from the Navy said that he was drunk and he was going to drop his drink. He was you know, really out of it and she took his glass of beer off him and he pushed her right in the face, right? And, you know, he was like, hey, hey, that's mine. But, you know, he handed his body over. He was blackout drunk at that point and the demon really did not like having his beer taken. And the next day, he woke up after being blackout drunk and feeling terrible and a few of his friends said, hey, you know last night you really violently shoved that girl in the face and he went, what? No, I'd never do that. That That is not something I would ever do. I, I am a gentleman. Women love me, right? And what this was is the demonic energy that had hijacked him had set up an energetic program and negative entities, especially possession entities, hate being held accountable. They absolutely hate it. So the second they said, hey, here's what you did, that you don't remember, he, he immediately had a violent, like angry reaction. And then a few other friends told him and he was getting quite angry. And then he asked the girl and she said, yes, that happened. And he went, oh, really? Like he, he couldn't believe it. Because in his mind, this entity had set up its own sense of self and it tied it in with his sense of self that he as a person would never do that therefore even while drunk and while something else is running his body he would never do that so it, it's very common that they do something horrible drunk, and you go hey do you remember what happened yesterday and they go no no I wouldn't do that that didn't happen or if it did they're like I, I, I don't care right it's, it's very common for narcissists to do that yeah Good, that is most of what I had written down in my drop points. Um, another very common alcohol energy is spirits. Now spirits, spirits doesn't really even have a veil. It's just like this blue vodka, vodka, not vodka, voodoo energy. It's got a lot of voodoo. Uh, in Africa, they use a lot of ghost energy and ghost energy grids. That's what spirits is. It's just 98% voodoo. It depends on the brand, but that's pretty much voodoo energy. If anyone else wants to name any comment alcohol and ask me about the symptoms because I don't know that much about alcohol because it's not something I have an interest in then let me know no dragons are not good Jacqueline they are evil there are no good dragons in this matrix I'll talk about dragons in a bit we're going to get through alcohol first oh I, I, by the way a big reason why this is dragons and alcohol is an alcoholic is not going to be like oh yes while, while drunk they're not going to go let me play the alcohol video no they're going to be like no I, would, I don't need that i like alcohol but they'll play the dragons video right that, that's a that's one reason why these are merged together that and it also makes sense to merge multiple things together so i'm not you know like dragons they're really not that big a topic it's a pretty small topic so it makes sense for me to just merge it with a more bigger topic no well, why would this video clear weed energy this is this is a alcohol energy weed is not alcohol dmt is not alcohol this is just you know drinking what about Dungeons and Dragons? That is a game. That is not. I'll talk. We're not talking about dragons. Come on. Not yet. I'll talk about now how gifting energetically works because I believe this is important for people to know. And then if I can think about anything else I need to talk about with alcohol, then I will. But the way gifting works is if you let's say you buy something it's ten dollars and you give it to someone the moment you decide you're giving it to them energetically it takes on their energy signature that's how the laws of this matrix really work now it, you can then if you've not told me you're giving to them you can be like actually i'm not giving to them and it will change back to your energy if there are there are a few ways to counter this though uh, let's say you have much better energy than um, a friend or a family member. You can give them something, but in, but in your mind, you don't even have to tell them this. You can be like, I'm giving this to you, but I want $1 for it, right? Then it will energetically stay yours, even though it's in their place, because it's not a gift. You are selling them something which they have not paid for. Therefore, energetically, it is still yours. That is one way to get around gifting uh, rules. But in general... It also means if you receive a gift from someone, unless they have deliberately cursed it, then the gift will become your energy 
even if they have some pretty bad energy. Now, sometimes, especially if the energy is bad, it might take a while. W one thing, if somebody sends, let's say, a box, the box will be their energy. They've not gifted you the box. That is simply a way to get the item to you. So if they have very bad energy, you will have to throw out the box very quickly. But the items inside will be yours and will have usually been unaffected by the box unless they have really, really cursed energy. So that's how gifting works. What I think about alcohol being used for wounds. I think alcohol being used for wounds is perfectly fine. It's not fine if you are drinking it, but using it to clear wounds as an... Um, it's too much vodka in my brain. It's Whatever vodka he drank, it must have been... There was a lot of minotaur energy and a lot of uh, baphomet energy in that. So I'm just seeing these balls and goats everywhere uh, as I'm clearing them from my brain as we speak. But your yeah, antibacterial, there we go, yes. What if someone wants to give you alcohol as a gift? Well, you can, depends how much it's worth. I would not take it. If it's like, here is a 700 bottle of champagne, $700 bottle of champagne, you can take it, and then you can re-gift it to someone else. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend you use it. Now, champagne energy, it's, it, I'll look at that. What I'm seeing is a thin layer of gold energy. It looks, but it's like, on close inspection, it's like yellow snotty gold, it's, it's not good gold. And it feels, basically I'm doing like an energy high, it comes up and then you need to drink it again because the high fades very quickly and then it comes up, pops, and then you're losing the high off the champagne. And then underneath that, I'm getting a whole lot of, looks like a lot of spider energy, especially huntsman spiders. And this black slime energy, this would be Corrupted nature energy. That is now. This will de vary depending on the brand, but that is champagne energy in general. I don't know what a herbal tincture is. Um, don't drink alcohol. <laughs> if a herbal tincture is drunk, then no. If you're putting it on your body, then in moderation, it should be okay. Can whole countries or areas take on alcohol energy? Not that I've seen, because... No, I mean, a town can, and, and a house, a house of a drunk, certainly gets absolutely filled with alcohol energy, which is why they'll often walk in and they'll just feel like they need a drink, and other people can walk in and feel like they need a drink just from being in their house's energy field. It, it is also interesting that people can be, like, there are high-functioning alcoholics. They can function on it no problem. My dad's sister made my dad, he didn't even look like an alcoholic in comparison to her. She'd been drunk for, like, at least 40 years. Now, the, the tip to it was this, right? To never have a, uh, a hangover is you drink a lot the night before, then you go to bed, and the next day when you wake up for breakfast, you drink some more, and then you don't need to get drunk, but you drink more, and that, that gets rid of the hangover. And that's how you can be drunk for 40 years. And, I mean, you, you, you know, you're driving around drunk all the time, or at least tipsy. It's not good for you. You certainly shouldn't be doing that. But these people can get through almost their entire life while just being, you know, in an old state of consciousness. Now, what they need to do is really, all right, look at their trauma wounds. And some, some of them, like, this, it's not major trauma wounds. It's just easier for them to get through life. It's just easier to not have to look at life properly. But... You know, try and get to the root of why you're drinking. If it's just because it's easier, stop doing that, right? Especially, let's say you're like, oh yeah, I really enjoy partying. The, you know, it's well, you're not going to. Let's say you're really unlucky. You get targeted by a uh, demonic curse. You're not going to be sitting in hell going, you know, it's worth sitting in hell, um, or, or for sixty years for those, you know, years of drinking. It's it was well worth it. You're not going to think that. Nobody's going to think that while they're getting attacked by demons. Right? Energy train, don't just deliberately set yourself back because you just can't be bothered to do the right thing. And a lot of, um, you know, alcohol drinking, it's just because you, you know, you're know, you out and it's social and it's peer pressure. I, I never would have uh, fallen for that. It's just easier to drink. Um, and, you know, it's, it's become, you know, there's entire industry space around it. It's become very much socially accepted 
even like crazy drinking with people, if they're out, at, if they're crazy, crazy drinking in their own house, that's not accepted. But if they're crazy drinking and they're outside, oh, that's just a crazy guy, right? Um, and they're the life of the party, or they're, they're the crazy guy who's violent and they go to the same pub for like 20 years before they finally get banned. But it is socially accepted and it really shouldn't be. So I think that's all I have to say. Herbal tincture is putting the herb in a vodka glass and letting it ferment. I'll have a look at the energy. On a physical level, yeah, that definitely has a lot of antibacterial properties. On an energetic level, no, that is, that's not good for you. It's not that bad for you. But, I mean, don't use that regularly. Only use it if you need to. Can an alcoholic neighbor affect you? Yes, if your house is not shielded properly, then yes. Can alcohol energy cause a beep in your right ear? Or what does it mean when you hear a high-pitched beep? So let's say, if you have, and most people do if they're targeted, have uh, frequency noises in your ear, it's usually just implants and programs and much other things, and if you drink alcohol or you're around people with alcohol, that lowers your energetic frequency, it lowers your energetic resistance, and then the frequency noises will become louder. That goes for pretty much being around any kind of negative energy, your frequency noises will get louder. That's just how it is. And then the more you clear those, get through the programs, etc., the quieter the frequency noises become before they entirely go away. What does it mean if I feel a bit of taste in my mouth while playing this? I've never drunken before. The bitter taste, let's have a look. For you, that is vodka. And that is from your mum, Clover. Your, <laughs> your mum drunk vodka. Not Probably not when she was pregnant with you. No, it doesn't look like it. But she did drink it with you while you were not with you. Definitely not with you. Drunk it around you while you were an infant. And that is how you got it. Now, if you go and tell your mum that, she will, she may, depending on how open she is, she may deny it because they'll be like, how, how, how did you figure this out? Right? Um, but that's where that is. So tasting bitter, tasting alcohol in your mouth, that is not you going, oh, I think I'll have that. No, that is you purging this out of your physical body as well as your energy body and your emotional body. No, alcohol does not amplify things, but it does lower your energetic resistance, making the other things worse. Will this video help people that work as bartenders? Yes, yes it will. De definitely will. It will, help, it will help you soak in the energy from the uh, bar you're working in at the time being. Good, let's talk about dragons. All right, so in this matrix, in uh, mainly seventh dimension, but again in the 95th and probably a few others, those are the main dimensions with dragons in them. Now, there are a bunch of different dragons. There are the Western dragons, which are the, the most common, the four legs, big wings, uh, mouth with the flame jet. They look very detailed. The, the stronger ones do anyway. Very detailed, flame jet in the mouth. Pow, they breathe fire. Very, very common negative entity. There are also a lot of Chinese dragons, wyverns. Um, Chinese dragons, they're less common in Europe, but they're very, very common in China, especially because they have a lot of celebrations around Chinese dragons, but they are also negative. They're much more serpent-like, long, tiny, tiny limbs. Um, if you're clearing energy, you'll run into these entities very quickly. They vary in colour. The strongest Chinese dragons are usually the rainbow-coloured dragons. The weakest ones are usually just black negative energy, which is just barely manifesting the shape of a dragon. Western dragons, there are different colours and a lot of different, let's say, species or breeds. Doesn't really matter that much. They're all evil. If you come across them, erase them. Now, there are also, these are the kind of entities that uh, false by light people tend to work with. The humanoidish dragons, these will be, and I've seen a lot of these, these will be Western dragons. They will have a dragon head, usually about like here, kind of like a crocodile, like it's got a big snout and then the eyes, eyes are there, and then often horns, or like weird dragon hair, and then dragon torso, dragon flesh, dragon arms, um, dragon legs, dragon tail. They're almost, you know, human, but not quite. They don't usually have genitals. Some do, most don't. Um, those are the ones they usually work with. I remember when I just started energy training, uh, I think I've been training for maybe seven months. One of those showed up in my bedroom and was staring at me, and then I told my friend, and he went, oh, that's a dragon, that, that's interesting. That, that, you know, they must think you have potential. 
<laughs> I do, and now I, I kill them all. But for the people watching this, they're like, but, but no, my dragons are good. If this video is raising them, right, I'm using positive energy. So let's say you have a battery and it's, it's got positive, right? A positive energy battery will not harm another positive energy battery. It's not possible. It's, it's not how it works. It, it's one of the rules of this matrix, right? Positive energy cannot destroy positive energy. Negative energy, it, a few offsets of it can destroy other negative energy, but in general, negative energy harms positive energy and tries to hybridize it and convert it to being um, positive to negative. And positive energy tries to clear negative energy. That's how this works. So if your dragons are freaking out, well, you've been tricked and you have to admit to yourself, oh, darn, you got me. And then you have the rest of your life to realize you've been got and to you know, work through it and not really stress about it. But that is what goes on with dragon targeting. Now, oh, that's right, I'm gonna talk about, this is very common, negative entities will often target people and hybridize them. This is a very, very common tactic um, and hybridize them. Now I've worked on quite a lot of people that have dragon hybridization. So I'm working on them and they've got a dragon head and dragon arms and sometimes you'll have like demonic hybridization here, dragon over there. But one thing that dragon hybridization really does to people is it gives them this big dragon tail that's really heavy and meaty and it's got a bone in it and it's very, very problematic. Often where once I fully clear them from the dragon hybridization, the pain on their back will alleviate, but then a few days later, the pain will usually come back. And what that is, is the dragon hybridization is gone, but because they have basically a large energy body weakness there, and entities don't want them to think they've been freed of the uh, targeting they've just had, they will retarget the lower back and try and replicate the pain that they had from having a tail for potentially years. It's just a common tactic that they do. Other than that, I mean, I, I could talk more in detail about energy hybridization, how people have like a dragon heart and then they'll have a second dragon heart over there and their cardiovascular system has no idea what it's supposed to do because it's got two hearts that are both just generating dragon energy. Dragon, um, a lot of people use dragon energy. There'll be a dragon energy grid, a main one. It looks like some kind of dragon language. That's what they'll tap into. It's a pretty weak energy. In terms of matrix energies, it's maybe sixth or seventh strongest, which is pretty low down. Your own internal energy as you train that will be incomparably stronger to any energy grids in the matrix. So no, don't use dragon energy. If you're using dragon energy, stop using dragon energy. Use your own energy. If the dragons say, no, no, you must you must use us. You know, you, you were a dragon in a past life. You, you are chosen. You're not chosen. They're tricking you. Just try, even if, right, just tell them, all right, all right, I'm just going to train my own energy for a year. And you know, if, if I'm a chosen dragon and all that, then it should be a big deal. And they'll usually uh, go berserk, play the video, and they'll, they'll go less berserk and get cleared. Um, one person said they avoid everything their husband mother, their husband's mother tries to give them. They can sense her negative energy, would never leave the gifts. The more she says no, the more she tries to give her gifts. Well, that is what's going on there is she's not really giving you a gift. She's giving you an item which has bad energy that's trying to harm you really. That's her you know, subconscious entity's goals. That's what's going on there. She's not actually giving you a gift because if she was, her energy would not be on it. Are dragons in cartoons harmful or have a negative influence? Not really. I'd say like ch children's cartoons with dragons, no. I think Thomas the Tank Engine had a Chinese New Year. There was Chinese New Year in there. I remember there being dragons when I was a child because I watched Thomas the Tank Engine a lot. And no, I didn't. I'm just checking. I picked up no dragon energy from that. There was some other odd energy in that show, but not not in the dragons. So they're fine. Do I know that Akira Toriyama died? I did. I did know he died. Um, I believe that he wasn't physically assassinated or anything, but I believe energetically negative things were set up and killed him that way. It, his death definitely doesn't feel organic or natural like it should have occurred then. It is crazy though, because he, without him, there wouldn't be, like, there was the shonen genre, but it, it wouldn't be, ah, the camera stopped. No. 
I think it's got like a 30 minute recorder uh, limit. Um, anyway, I've just got to keep clearing it and it'll, it'll fix up. Yes, it is crazy though, because without him, there really wouldn't be the modern shonen, shonen genre at all. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, which is a phenomenal series, I strongly recommend that. That really gets down. If, if you want to see how like botchlings and a lot of really common eventies look, watch Jujutsu Kaisen. It's really good. That wouldn't exist without Dragon Ball Z. Uh, the, the whole Murum genre, the whole uh, Korean and um, the Chinese one might, but the whole Korean uh, like manga industry really wouldn't exist without Dragon Ball Z. He really did, you know, cause a, a revolution in entertainment, um, which was incredible, especially because he, he started with a comedy manga called Dr. Slump, and then he, his wife said, you, you know, you watch all these um, martial arts movies on TV, why don't, why don't you write one of those? So he gave it a go and ended up really, you know, creating a phenomenal series. He also Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is a, a terrific game. No, no, none of the monsters there are entities. One thing about Dragon Ball Z, none of the mon monsters, other than maybe like the cat people, you could say they're entities, but they're not the way they're drawn, they're not. The overall world of Dragon Ball Z it was very original. It, a lot of people did go, alright, here's dragons, here's monsters. I mean, it had dinosaurs, but even they didn't, they don't look like dinosaurs, they look like cartoony, his own creation of dinosaurs. But he was very very creative especially given that he was only getting like six hours of sleep because that's how they treat monsters especially back in the 80s and 90s they treated them like slaves they, they were slaves um but no it is yeah very unfortunate that he died but then he had retired really when dragon balls he finished i'm pretty sure he didn't write dragon ball gt and i i really don't think he wrote dragon ball super um, it's very unlikely. They put his name on it. They paid him, but he, he didn't write that. What's interesting with Dragon Ball Z, I, I feel like this world, especially the more energy sharing, we're basically living in a like, crappy Chinese cultivation novel where it's just, um, uh, the power levels don't end. It just keeps coming up and there's always 10 million more demons at the power level you get to. It's, it's just how this is. Eventually I'll get to a point where that there, there'll be none or there'll be like two, but... We're, we're living in, you know, similar to Dragon Ball Z. There is no power scaling limit. It just it just keeps going. Um, until eventually, you know, I'll, re I'll reach into it. It is also interesting, the Spirit Bomb, because I've tried the Spirit Bomb. Who has not tried the Spirit Bomb? Energetically, you can you can do the Spirit Bomb. You, you make a giant... Now, not, it's not going to show up physically, but other people who can see energy can definitely see it. You would, need an, you would need a lot of energy to make a dense physical spirit bomb but the spirit bomb what it is if for anyone who's not seen Dragon Ball Z is he will use his own energy and create a ball a blue ball above his head and then he will use nature's energy and he will also accept energy from other uh, positive people around him and the spirit ball will become larger no spirit bomb why am I saying spirit ball the spirit bomb will become larger and then he'll throw it at the villain and it will only hurt somebody who has an evil heart That that's a very uh, interesting technique and you can do that but you're much better off just training your energy and not not trying to you want to train your energy and just clear things at a gradual pace rather than spend a long time like an hour building a spirit bomb and blowing things up it's just not as energy efficient or as time efficient what is the relationship between snake energy and dragon energy there's not much other than chinese dragons can somewhat look like snakes but there's not much connection there one thing i will say just because i did mention this jujutsu kaisen it's a really good series in that, yeah, and Bleach does this as well, but I don't recommend Bleach. I, I, Bleach is a great series, but it's long. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen is something I would actually, I would definitely recommend that first. It has uh, minor spoilers for the first episode. The main character eats a cursed object because he's not that bright, and th there's a few story reasons. And then he gets a demon inside of him, this very, very old demon from thousands of years ago. And when he goes to fight this demon inside his own consciousness he basically he can keep control of his body but if he goes to actually fight the demon with his own internal energy he, he gets he gets beat up pretty badly and that often happens with people who are like you know what I've had enough of these demons I've realised they're demons and they go in and they challenge the biggest scariest thing that they've been dealing with for a long time and it beats beats them up because you, you need to train yourself and then go and find the like the head demon um, usually fortunately you won't be able to perceive them but occasionally, especially if you enter, like, let's say there's a child that's... That was weird. 
there's a child that's very clearly possessed. Do not be like, all right, I will fight the demon and you let it into your body. Don't do something crazy like that. Because then you can end up with a Jujutsu Kaisen-like situation where you let this demon into your body. The demon is stronger than you. Yes, you can keep control of your body, but your mind and your energy, you've now got this demon inside of you. Um, and the main character, he doesn't... You, you, what's really good about that, it's not like Naruto, which I did read the manga for, where it's like, oh, the, the demon's actually a really good guy deep down. No, this, he's a demon. He's pure evil. He just wants malice and destruction and chaos, right? That's what a demon is. It's it's evil uh, manifested into reality. So this demon, him and, him and the demon, they don't become, you know, friends and get along. No, this demon is actively trying to manipulate his way to take control of his body and gain freedom. And the main character actively has to prevent that. But him and the demon, very early on, they... Uh, he challenges him to a duel in his own mind and he loses instantly <laughs> again that's like episode 2 I'm not I'm not spoiling major things but I do strongly recommend alright now let me spell it for you Jujutsu Kaisen J-U-J-U-J-U-T-S-U Jujutsu Kaisen K-I-S-E-N if the creator of Jujutsu Kaisen speaks English he's welcome to come on my show I don't think he does I'd be very surprised if he does. He, but it's a really, really good series. The, watch the anime. The anime is better than the manga, which is very rare. Very rare, but it is incredible. So I would strongly recommend that. But I do believe without uh, Dragon Ball Z, Jujutsu Kaisen and a lot of these series really would not... This whole genre would not be anywhere near the stake it's at right now. Now, fortunately, Akira Toriyama... Um, not, uh, unfortunately, because he was... I'd say he, he really did have a positive impact on a lot of people's lives. He probably was very targeted and he's probably somewhere bad, but we'll, we'll you know, have a look at that in the future. Um, I'm not feeling that's a time pressing matter at the moment. Can someone speaking dragon light language next to you affect you? Yes, yes they can. Don't let them do that. No, stay away from dragon light language. Uh, that's bad. It's false light energy. I've talked about the light language before. How do you know if you're targeted? Things are difficult. And the, the voices in your head, when you call them out, will tell you you're targeted. It, it's kind of apparent. If you're watching my videos, you probably have been targeted enough. Uh, unless you've just come across me to come in with an energy and clear. That's great. That's terrific. Well done. But if you're just pain everywhere and you're, you know life's just hard, you're probably quite targeted. Do dragons physically exist on Earth? That's a good question. And I should have written that in my dot points, but I just wrote dot points about alcohol. The dragons, did they exist on Earth? Yes. Now, but but not not really, not really. By that I mean there wasn't a dragon on a mountain in a castle, or, or in, you know, mountain or castle, that a knight had to go and fight, right? Me, I went, to, I would go and slay the dragon. No, what there would be uh, on Earth, right? In history, in what I've seen, especially before the first reset on Earth, there were a series of. There were about five or six. I'm actually I'm thinking into it now. No, there were, it's still going up, 11, 13, 15, 19. Okay, there were 19 major, so far, 19 major dragon cultist groups. Some of them had members of 4,000, some of them were up to like 26,000. And these people worship dragons. And what they would do is they do a bunch of drugs, which I don't really even feel this drug on Earth. It's probably not here. But they would take these drugs and then they would bring in people and sacrifice them to these dragons that they were seeing energetically. And then this dragon would physically manifest for uh, almost physically, not completely, but almost for a period of usually three to four hours uh, while they were stripped and it would give them dragonic abilities um, and energetic mainly, which were bad in the long term, very bad in the long term, also pretty bad in the short term. But they were there after the first reset, the first major biblical flood. No, the people haven't been worshiping dragons since. Uh, during the time before the first and second reset, there's probably more to do with the dragons uh, before the second reset than the first, actually. There's more dragons there. They would be then, during that period when the Earth was at a very, very, the darkest it could get, they would be able to physically manifest. I think I said in a previous video that I believe entities were pretty dumb, and that they are, but they would just be here, have a feeding frenzy, and then get killed by the flood. A lot of them, the smart ones, the really old ones, they would come here, have a feeding frenzy, then they would exit the Matrix shortly before the flood, because they have... Uh, basically precognition powers, they could feel the energy was going to change, and then they would leave, often a day or two, sometimes a week if they felt they wouldn't be able to get out, before the flood locked things down. Because once the flood starts, Matrix is closed, no one's getting in or out. But, so, 
dragons were never really physically here on Earth as far as I can tell. Should you keep gifts from a company that fired you unfairly? Is it enough to remove the logo? Remove the logo might help a bit. Uh, it really depends. Feel the energy. Does the gift feel like your energy or does it feel like the company's? If it is the company's, how bad is the energy? Is it a great gift? If it's not, get rid of it. Do children from alcoholic parents get to deal with self-loathing and sexual blocks? Yes. Yes, they do. That, that's a major thing that alcoholic energy does. Yes, you can get negative energy off a cursed object that you bought from someone else, correct. When I re-uploaded the last two live stream videos, the chat is removed. Yes, that's because I'm uploading it on YouTube, because otherwise the uh, YouTube makes it like 240p. When I'm, I have a really good camera. This this is a 4K video right now. Look, look at all the detail on my face. Look at my cat scratch. I was kissing my cat too much, and my cat scratched me, and... <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I you know I set things up properly. I got all my lights. My remote for that light uh, ran out of battery, which is why there's no purple. Instead, it's just like standard white today. But you know I, I set everything up nicely, and then it's in like 240p. Come on, so that's why I'm doing that. I got information panel on my lizard man video. I did. What does it say? Does it say lizard men are not real? <laughs> does dragon hybridization cause brain fog and mental emptiness? That can be so many things, but yes, dragon hybridization would definitely cause that. Good. Does anyone have any other questions? Otherwise, I think we're good. What are we at? An hour and six minutes. That's pretty good. Yep. You, um, which cat scratched me? My cat. My cat scratched me. Why do dragons spit fire? Uh, it's how they're designed uh, anatomically. It's one of their abilities. They have this, basically, they have a stomach, it, like, like something right here, and it's a fire pouch. This is most of the Western dragons. And then it comes up through a cord, and then they have this bit on top of their mouth that the fire comes out of. That's how it works. Do dragons and phoenixes fight? No, because phoenix is also negative, so not normally. If you're getting ring in your left ear but a lot, but you don't think it's negative, pretty much all frequency noises in your ear are negative, unless it's like a calming... No, even if it's a calming one, you shouldn't be getting frequency noises in your ears. Does the ear of the dragon have an effect on us? I don't know. Let me have a look. It has a very, very strong effect in China, but in Europe, where we don't believe in the year of the dragon, we believe in the year of 2024, no, it's not affecting us at all. If you go to China, it will, but you're going to have bigger problems if you go to China. <laughs> Probably, there's some pretty dense energy there. Uh, is there a bridge chakra at the top of there? There are a bunch of other chakras other than the basic ones, and I've cleared most of them. So, yes, but it would be negative, so erase it. Conspiracy, yes, that's what they are. No, this, this is all, that's why I label these as entertainment, right? We're just having a, a good time. Because if I try and say educational, they'll be like, wait a minute, this isn't in the history books. Um, but if it's entertainment, then, you know, I, normies can think, oh, look, you know, this guy's having a laugh and people who can feel energy and people who are aware of things can think, oh, he's just said entertainment because that's the best way to not get taken down, <laughs> pretty much. Also, I mean, let's be honest, energy is entertaining, even if it is, you know, true. Does dragon and alcohol energy work together? No, not really. Let me have a look. Are there any d drinks with alcohol, d with a dragon energy and alcohol? The answer is yes, but not in Europe, pretty much. There are a few, few Asian drinks. Looks like Asian drinks have a lot of dragons. Um, Western drinks, we mainly just got demons and ghosts and purgatory entities in them. Good, all right. Any other questions about alcohol or demons? If you, if I've not answered them here, uh, demons, dragons. If I've not answered them here, then you will write them in the comments. And if they're good, if they're good questions, then I may answer them in the next video. Uh, do that rather than emailing me because I'm much more likely to answer your question in a video and benefit others than just, you know, give you a one-on-one -on -one answer. It makes more sense to, uh, you know, for this to be a public answer. Yes, I will check session bookings maybe today or tomorrow for next week. Is it AI alcohol? I don't 
you're talking to a guy who doesn't drink. <laughs> oh, what's also interesting, um, some entities really, really hate alcohol. Like, my mum had a lot of witch energy, and my mum became allergic to alcohol. And then she'd try different things, and she'd be like, oh, I can have this one. And then she'd have it once, and then the next time she'd have it, she'd be allergic to it. That was the witch energy going, no, no, not this. And then it would go to her immune system and develop a yeah, allergic reaction and an intolerance to the alcohol. So that can happen as well. So if someone's allergic to alcohol, it's not usually like, oh, they're in such a great energetic state. No, it's usually they've got a lot of a particular entity race that really doesn't like competing. And that's why they're allergic. Good. All right, everyone. Have a good afternoon.